Sairam students, welcome to another class of English literature and today is the continuation of our poem Animals. In our last class we have understood what the poem is all about. In today's class we will be dealing with the literary devices used in this poem. So students just keep a book and a pen handy to jot down all the literary devices that we will be doing in this class. Also before I proceed further, let's have a short recap of what the poem is all about. The poet Walt Whitman says that he would prefer to stay with animals than with human beings. Now, why does he say so? You know, he is trying to compare animals and human beings. He says that human beings are, you know, human beings are greedy. They are, you know, they just keep on running behind worldly pleasures. On the other hand, he says animals, they are calm. They are self-contained. They are least bothered about the worldly pleasures. He says human beings, they are greedy and you know, they are jealous of each other. They cannot see anybody else happy. Animals, you know, they do not cry over their sins, whereas human beings, they do. And animals don't go around boasting about the duties that they do towards God. So he says, he is anytime comfortable staying with animals. Then he says that in animal kingdom, it's not that, you know, only one particular animal is given respect. Everyone is equally respected. But what happens in our society? The strong and the rich, they are respected. The poor is neglected. He says that, you know, he, he cannot trust on the relationships that he has. Why? Because they may smile at each other when they, you know, when they are with each other, they, they'll be very happy. But the moment they turn behind, they turn their backs, they may speak ill about each other, which animals don't do. They don't hide their relation. So he says that how come qualities like kindness, how come qualities like sincerity these animals possess? These qualities were possessed by human beings long, long ago. How come they have got these qualities? How have these animals got these qualities? Is it that we have negligently dropped it and they have got it? So he questions us towards the end that how come these animals possess fantastic qualities. So that's it with the poem, a short summary. Now we'll begin with the literary devices used in the poem. What are literary devices? They are basically the rhyme scheme and the figures of speech. So let's get started with the lit literary devices. What is the rhyme scheme used? If you remember, when I gave you a short introduction about Walt Whitman, I told you that he introduced a free verse kind of poem. So yes, even this poem is a free verse. There is no rhyme scheme followed in this particular poem. Moving ahead with the figures of speech, let us see, this is, these are the first few lines. Let us see what are the figures of speech for this, these lines. Okay. Look at the very first line. He says it is 
assonance now what's an assonance students assonance is the repetition of the sound of a vowel so look here i i live again the sound of i with again the sound of i and animals again the sound of i so that makes it an assonance i hope students all of you are jotting it down this will definitely help you when you are answering your assignment which will be which will follow this video next proceeding further the next figures of speech is repetition how repetition let us see look at this line again i stand and look at them long and long so the words long and long they are repeated for better poetic effect so that makes it a repetition i hope i am clear students moving to the next figures of speech let us see anaphora now how it's an anaphora let us see look at these lines i think i could turn and i stand and look at them long and long so year it begins with i again over year it begins with i so when two sentences have similar uh, beginning such sentences the figures of speech is anaphora clear proceeding further with the next figures of speech coming to this part of the poem let us see what are what is the figure of speech used over here again it's anaphora let us see how anaphora these lines over here they do not sweat they do not lie they do not make so these three lines okay again these three lines what are they using the beginning is common they do not they do not and they do not so this makes it anaphora they have a similar beginning these three lines 1 2 and 3 it makes it anaphora clear proceeding further with the next figures of speech let us see it is metaphor how okay what does sweat and wine mean i told you sweat don't take the literal meaning of the word sweat what does it mean it means to complain so sweat and wine they refer to the cries and complaints of human being there is indirect comparison done between sweat and wine and cries and complaints clear proceeding further come to this part of the poem let us see the figures of speech used okay So again the figure of speech used over here is metaphor If you see this line they bring me tokens of myself the second last line i'm talking about they bring me tokens of myself so what uh, what are these tokens that he is speaking about it is nothing but the qualities okay which qualities quality is like yes qualities we have qualities like being self contained okay you know you do not cry over what you don't have okay so such qualities he is talking about so these qualities are nothing but the tokens so tokens and qualities there is in direct comparison made okay so that's it when uh, when we speak about the figures of speech of this poem 
So what have we seen? There are various figures of speech used in this poem. To begin with, we had assonance. What is assonance? Assonance is the repetition of the vowel sound. Then we had repetition, wherein the words are repeated. We have metaphor. Metaphor is indirect or implied comparison between two different objects. Clear? So these were the important figures of speech that we discussed. Now let us see what message have we got from this poem. Let's read it. The poet Walt Whitman wants to convey the message that man should live happy, contented, peaceful life like the animals. So these are the tokens which now animals possess. Okay, they are happy, they are contented, they are, you know, they are peaceful. They are leading a very peaceful life, which, which human beings don't do. Okay, so he, he says that, uh, you know, even human beings should live a happy, contented and a peaceful life. He should not indulge in amassing wealth. Human beings should not run behind money. It will make him selfish, greedy, commit sins, repent for his behavior and follies and spend sleepless nights. So if you run behind money, money may make you do, you know, all wrong things. People may earn money doing, you know, all possible wrong things, which is incorrect. And then that human being is going to repent throughout his life. So he says we one should not run behind money. Don't, you know, don't indulge in amassing wealth because it may, you know, it may uh, force you to commit various sins. Then the poet wants to live among the company of animals and experience life free of sins. The poet believes that long ago human beings possessed those qualities which have been left. So it's not, you know, uh, that human beings never had these qualities. They always possessed these qualities. But that was long, long ago. Maybe he's talking about our ancestors. They possessed these qualities. Okay. But now, present generation, we do not possess these qualities. We are not happy with what we have. We run behind money. Okay. There is more preference given to strong and rich person in the society. Poor are neglected. So he says that these qualities were possessed by human beings. Yes, but that happened long, long ago. The poem teaches us to learn from qualities of animals who live in peace and contentment. So he's saying that we should learn something from these animals. How happily they live, how contented they are. Okay, so this is the message that we get from our poem, Animals. I hope students, the poem is clear to all of you. Not only the explanation part, but also the literary devices that we have used. And I also hope that you have, you have written down these literary devices in your book. Moving ahead, let us see the value points that we come across in this poem. Yes, the poem. The poet feels comfortable with animals. He doesn't feel comfortable with human beings. So students just go through the value points quickly. So value points have given you again a short summary of what the poem is all about. So that's it for today students. We are done with our poem animals. So students there is another link wherein you have to answer the set of questions sent for you. Do answer them and submit them. Until we meet next. You will take care of yourselves. 
Sairam and bye-bye.